Hello, how are you? My name is Anthony Gray of Grayscale Painting. I like to uh, do a relatively simple project. Um, it'll show you how to do texture and tones. Okay. Uh, we're going to make a big slab of wood. Okay. But we're going to sneak all sorts of colors in there. And yet it's still going to maintain its brownish um, kind of look. We'll put the wood grain in there. We'll use uh, a thicker brush. We'll put some wood, uh, make it look like wood slats. Okay, so we're gonna get right on to it. I won't have the uh, no cutaways this time. I'll explain what I'm doing here. The colors I do have on my palette is dioxazine purple, um, cad yellow, cad orange, cad red, sap green, um, not too much titanium white and i got phthalo blue okay and we're gonna just get cracking and get right on to it i do use heavy body acrylic paint i do have vegetable glycerin which helps to paint the blend uh make your thick paint a little transparent um easing fading and everything and uh if you use more glycerin than paint it makes an excellent glaze so right now what i'm going to do this is 11 by 15 inch watercolor paper by the way and i'm going to get a nice thin coat of this medium and put it right on my paper here all I need is a very thin coat okay that, that is all I need because I want to fade and blend the first uh, few layers the main colors okay and then as it dries we can start adding the finer details of the uh, wood grain and all that good stuff but you don't want your your uh, palette really too wet all right this is a fun little project to do like i say i'm very thin with the glycerin here and glycerin also uh, um um it it will uh react to the temperature of the room is what i'm saying basically all right so we're gonna start sneaking in little colors here this is all the base tone okay now your mix once i start blending and everything we're gonna try, try to make these colors a little deeper than usual okay before i put the general color on because you really want to saturate your paper with the with the um different colors first then you're gonna put the general wood color on over it okay so some of those colors are kind of sneak through a little bit so right now i'm just taking a little bit of dark green purple okay and its opposite is yellow. So I'm taking a little bit of yellow. Okay, it's gonna give me this weird greenish type of uh, tint in it. Okay, and you can pretty much start any way you want. I'll start, start, I'll start putting it right here. Okay, I'm gonna take a, the smallest bit of green, really small. I'll pop some green up around in here like this. Okay, now, a little bit of red. Now I'm gonna put that red right on top of where some of that green is. Kind of darken it up in spots. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna pop in all sorts of little colors in here. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. Okay, and I'll put the blue up here, somewhere around in the corner, very lightly. I'm just gonna mask the whole thing in color. Just like this, just sneak those colors in there. Just like that. I know it looks messy, it looks crazy. Okay. And you know, be expected, it's fine. You know, if you want to do stuff like this, start to get the patterns going, you can do that also if you if you want. Up to you. Really up to you. Okay. As you see, it's it's lightly, it's been lightly um put on there. Okay. And then I'll just start to do the little X stroke thing. Just like this. X stroke all the way. I'm going to use brushes that people commonly have. So this is just a thick, you know, my little go-to brush here. You can use any thick, large, flat brush that you might have. Okay, really up to you how you want to how you want to do it. I'm going to blend all of this to get take a soft brush. I'm going to just blend it all. Oh, let's see what I have. 
I guess I can use this big guy. It's more of a, just a giant mop brush, really. Okay, in, just like so. Straight up and down, if you would like. I would prefer to go straight up and down with it. That's just me. Okay, and you see this bits of white showing through. Okay, which is cool, that's, that's fine. Because remember, you would start adding different shades and tones to it. Okay, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna add a little bit of, a little red, a little green, I'm gonna start canceling out colors. I'm using a lot of opposite colors, okay. It gives me that little brownish tinge that I'm looking for. And we'll start kinda just popping in some colors in there, just like this. Just wanna darken it up in spots, okay. And once again, start that little wood grain look. Just like that, come on down a little bit. I'm gonna add some of that brown up in that corner where the blue is. You, you can pretty much have these any way you prefer. I'm just moving the color around here. Use a little bit of that color, I'm gonna go down and kinda tame that blue a little bit, but it brings it a little bit darker in that corner, which is cool. See, just straight up and down. Doesn't look like much yet, but it will. But you see, we sneak in all sorts of little colors. I'm gonna even take a little bit of yellow. Okay, oh, I'll put it right around here somewhere. So I'll pop a little, little bit of yellow in that, just like that. Just like this, straight up and down. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. So I'm slowly building up the the darkness in the in the paper and we're gonna blend all of that in okay if you don't have a, um, a brush like I have here a large soft brush I'm just once again just streaking the paint up and down straight up and down just like that but you can kind of see how it's all kind of working out there just like that I remember this will be a main color covering all through this you follow so I'm kind of serving a dual purpose here because I'm getting the uh, glycerin to be a little more tacky it's being it's being layered with the different paints okay so it's starting to look like beat up weathered wood a little bit okay I'm just wiping off my brush okay we're gonna start having a little fun with this now. I'm gonna mix a fairly dark color. I'm gonna use, first off, a thicker brush. Um, a thicker flat brush, something like this. Okay, I'm gonna wet it here. And we're gonna mix a, a very deep color because we're gonna put the wood slats in, all right? And I'm going to use nothing but paint. I'm going into purple here. I got to mix something fairly dark. So I'm going into my purple phthalo blue. Okay. Then I'm going to use a little bit of this cad red in it. Got to get it fairly dark. Okay. So I'm getting some cad red in there. I got the purple and the blue mixed in there with the cad red. All right. Now I'm going into my green. I'm not going to put any white in this. It's a very dark, deep color. It will closely resemble somewhat resemble black, but it's not a true black. Okay. All right. Let's start putting some wood slats in there. You can make them as thin or as thick as you want. Now, if you're a little nervous about them being a little crooked or whatnot just move your whole arm okay so i'm starting ab above where the tape is move your whole arm just like this go straight down straight down straight down just like that i remember using all paint so this stuff is going to dry i'll make the slats a little a few inches apart or three four inches apart there 
straight down just like that get a nice little press do you see what it's starting to look like already uh, like weathered wood keep it as straight as you can straight down just like so all right you see what it's starting to look like already okay you even start seeing little your eyes showing you patterns of grain already okay thicken that up a little bit all right looking pretty good so far all right <coughs> I'm just putting the brush back we're gonna move on to a thinner brush um, here's where it becomes quite interesting and a little fun for you uh let's move on to a now i can use if you have one if you have one nice thin tiny brush like that if you don't have one like this then you can use a um what you call a um liner brush script liner if you want to use one of those or you can use a large fan brush for what we're about to do next okay i would prefer you use one of these if you got one with a very small little tip if you don't have one then use a script liner I'm wetting the brush I'm going into the dark mix that I've already used and I'm going to use um, if I have to loosen up the paint I will use water okay now here's where it gets a little fun okay because you're gonna make the wood striations now okay so start from wherever you would like all right your patterns of wood can be anything you want all right now when i start it okay you know you can do the little v formation something like this okay kind of bring them out there like that come on down wiggle it make it look kind of natural because they're all in different sizes okay now as you see me doing this i'll come up there like that now remember, if you got glycerin, if you're an oil painter, you got um, linseed oil or something like that. Okay. Remember, you don't really want them to get too light. Okay. And you just start making your little striations of the wood. Okay. Now, what's going to help sell this? as your wood grain it's the different patterns you're getting okay and remember try to use your the flat end where you make it as narrow like that make that narrow line in there of course you're going to get different variations as the paint starts to wear away and come off but that's that's the fun part if you feel like it's getting a little too thin or too thick get some more paint on both sides get a nice sharp edge and just use that leading edge okay just what you see me doing right now all right and there's one for you okay and that's using a little tiny brush like this all right I'm gonna do another one with this small tiny brush okay I think I'll do every other one so I'll come here I'll put right right, right here like this like that okay and like a almost like a little knot of wood make it smaller just like that getting some more and we'll just kind of come on down here like this and we'll kind of come up like that and we'll just kind of make it come to a point and you just pull it out there like this come there look at that the key is you can put it in any shape you want all right but they just have to kind of just like this you bring it down if you want now my paint starting to get a little tacky I can tell by the feel of it and what I'm using is water I'm not using any glycerin because I want my paint to dry okay remember you want to keep a kind of a fine line let's go over here let's kind of give it something over here a little different 
you don't have to go all the way down with your wood grain because your eye is going to put all of this together just like that come on down here have it come to the side like that getting some more because if you feel your paint starting to come off kind of rough you know you just get some more it is your preference but you see what it's looking like now okay come on down there with it that's like this uh, we'll have a little curve there put a little knot of wood right in there like that up to you you don't have to have the knot of wood I'm just showing you how to how to do it like I said, I'm doing this with a flat a very small flat brush all right it's a number one actually flat synthetic or natural hair doesn't matter at this at this point okay a little more of that dark color like I said the next two I'm gonna do a um, do a um, script liner with but look how it's starting to turn out there all right okay I'm gonna put this brush away well before I do that let's add something a little cute let's get into a little bit of white and I'm going into my little dark mix all right watch this so I might as well do this right now while I'm thinking about it it will add a little bit of depth into your your stripes your strike your lines there because you got a thick line you actually got a left and right side okay so it's up to you where you want to put the white at and what was going to do a nice thin layer of white right on the side there you got like a little little glow like a little bit of highlight on that little rim okay and keep it fairly thin i'm gonna get a little water here keep it fairly thin Now, if you end up going too much into your dark, you can return that. Don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm, I'm going to do every one on the uh, right side here. Get a little more titanium white. Mix it in there. Just wanna, You want to tint your white. Okay. Like I say, if, if you went a little thick, don't worry. You're going to return some of that darkness. That I'm not worried about. got one more right here now that's not getting as bright as I would like it so I'm going back into my titanium white into that little that dark mix I previously had I'm not using any water I want some of that nice opaque to come through on this getting some more Now, like I said, if it's a little thick, have no concerns about that. Because if it's too thick, okay, you can go back into your dark mix, which is what I'm going to do right now. And where it's a little thick at, you can return some of that dark and you can straighten some of that out there. You just don't make the, um, the white disappear. Go a little further inside. You see how you can return some of that dark? There you go bring some of that dark right back and as you're bringing the dark back you're, you're gonna tighten up some of that that white there just like so bring some of that dark right back okay and if you don't realize it yet some of your your uh, lines are starting to dry if you're working in acrylic Okay, 
but if you are working in oils obviously it's not dry but your paint is on relatively thin because you're making a very dark mix to begin with to lay on this on your on your um, canvas okay just like that all right let us put this flat brush away I'm going to get a script liner now script liners are fun they are now with script liners you need plenty of water in your thick paint now you got oil paint you're going to use a little little bit of thinner to thin your or, or linseed to thin your paint you got to get it to an inky consistency so if you got a little bit of turp or or um, linseed okay you want your paint to be extremely inky all right for this to be done and here we go now this is going to give a different look because it's a finer line okay and so i'm just giving you an example of however you want to see how fine that line is look at this okay this is going to make an extremely fine line of wood grain so it's going to look kind of funny on my paper but you got your choice now of however you want to do this no matter how much you vary your line you can make it as thick or as fine as you would like but look at how this is being done you can take a you can take a fan brush and pretty much do the same exact thing so it's whatever tool you want all right depending on what type of wood grain you want i'll give you a close-up of what some of this looks like okay and because you're working with such a thin brush you can get nice tight lines in there all right and what i'm doing is i'm rolling my script liner into the paint get a nice nice uh group of get a nice load of paint on, on your on your brush we'll do it like this just like that almost like uh the old school pen striping just like so and if you notice i'm holding my brush for further back then what i would usually do i'm going in my water i'm getting some because my paint's starting to get tacky again this is like i say heavy body paint and this is giving definitely a different look to your wood grain if you're a little bit sneaky and artistically inclined to put your signature in the wood grain um, you can do that too it would be almost like hidden in plain sight type of thing now if you're losing the intensity of your inks because of the water um, if you're doing it in, in acrylics you just deepen it up again add more of your, your color add a little bit more I'm using my script liner to do this add a little more purple a little more blue a little bit of red get it get it dark again all right and a slight touch of the green mix it all in there makes it good even with your script liner all right like I said I got thick paint here so and I'm just putting it right in there because I want to bring my dark back okay some of that darkness back there getting a little more red it kills off some of that green. I see a little bit of green tint in there. And I'm just getting rid of that. And here we go. We're coming back. Now this is going to be pretty. Yeah. See? My dark is coming back. Just like that. It's sort of like a little dance. Because you don't want the paint too thick. And you don't want it too thin. Alright. But I'm getting. My, my intensity is coming back with the. With the. Um with the paint you want them fairly fairly deep all right so I'm rolling the paint in there getting a nice thick glob of paint there nice load of paint going on look at this see how easily you can do that all right that's some very fine wood grain you have in there okay but you see the difference okay 
got one more side to do. We've got this guy over here. And pretty much the same thing. See that? Like I say, if you want to take it and go all the way down with it, twirl your brush. Twirl your brush. Look at this. I'll just make these a little thicker. Just twirl your brush using all the brush there like that. So we make these even different. Okay. See that nice nice like that. Like that. And we'll come down. See, I'm just getting wider striations here. I'm twirling my brush as I'm doing it. See that? Getting a little water. Now, if you want to do it this way, do it this way. Watch. Side of the brush. Okay, side of the brush. And you're twirling the brush around. You see how uneven the lines are becoming. See this? And I'm just going straight up and down. Here we go. Twirl the brush around. Make it all uneven. Just like this, twirling the brush. Okay, look at that. So many different ways you can get your wood grain patterns going. And because, no matter if you twirl your brush and they're thin lines or thicker lines, they're not thicker than those big crease lines, those slats that you, you've made, because they're, they're thicker. Okay, so you can still tell that these, these grains are still separated. Just like so. Come on down there. Keep it going. See. And it looks natural. Look at that. And you see there's all the see the colors, the red and the greens and the blues that are snuck in there, the little bit of yellow. Okay. So it does look like weathered weathered beaten down wood here. Look at that all up in here come down see this like so okay so you got all sorts of interesting things going on now this is acrylic so my paint is starting to dry a bit okay and since it's starting to dry i'm gonna take advantage of that because i still want my i want my um let me get another where's my flat brush I want another I want a nice deep um separation of of those slats there okay so I'm going back with my flat brush this is not really the one I use I want my bigger one back there it is I found it this guy now I'm going into that watered down paint And I'm gonna emphasize that darkness all over again with the bigger brush. Come on down. Really put it in there. I'm not covering up the white. See, now my paint is starting. I can feel this. It's dry. I'm not adding any glycerin. I'm just using this dark paint. All right, and I'm just going over the wood slats. But I'm not covering that white. All right, that little shine that's going in there. I'm stroking both sides, equal with paint. Take it, give it a little press, and go straight down. My whole arm is traveling. Okay, put it right in there, just like that. All right, I'm cleaning off the brush real quick. I'm gonna use this same brush. Now, be a little careful. I'm going into my white, pure white. Okay, cause I'm using only the sharp end. Okay, and I'm gonna go over it with pure white, straight line. Some of it will catch, some of it will not. I'm going back in, it's almost like dry brushing a white line. Cause you don't, you don't necessarily really want it perfect. And I'm just getting little tiny highlights of white in there. All right, same thing here. It'll catch on some, it, some it won't. Okay. So you kind of want to load your brush up on the tip. Nice firm edge there. Just like that. Just let it do what it does. Just like that. Some of it is stronger than others. Okay. If you end up going too far into the black, that's all right. Because you know what? You can return that. It's sort of like a dance. Okay. So I got little bits of white, little bits of, let's strengthen that down there a little bit more. Right here, 
strengthen that this a little bit. Okay, just like that. Now, for those of you guys who are working in oil paint, okay, you would have to wait. But if you got it on there thin, you can pretty much uh, get away with this. Now, I've I've uh, over over stroked on a couple of these, and I'm gonna return that darkness right back just that quickly. Okay, anywhere where I think I may have overstepped my bounds with the paint. I can just bring it back real quick. It's no big deal. I think we're good though. Now see how quickly that was done? And on purpose, you got different strokes that I've put in there on purpose. Okay. Now, most of this is, is um, fairly dry for me. All right, remember I'm working in acrylics. Okay, so most of this is dry. Okay, it's working its way into the um, to the paper. You guys are working on canvas. Okay, if you have a very, very soft brush, okay, the next step would be kind of fun. If you have a very soft brush, okay, it will take a soft brush to do this. All right. You can um, mix um, some darker color. It's a little bit. Now I do have a soft brush. I got a soft mop. Okay. And I can put some nice dark patches in there. I can sneak up a bit in there just using this guy. Or if you have anything equivalent. It doesn't have to be round like this. If it's flat and very soft. And I'm going into a little bit of dark with this very soft brush. Okay. Very soft. Okay. And I can just take it with some of that soft some of that, some of that paint and I can just kind of put some darkness in there like that very soft very soft I'm going into my little bit of phthalo blue with this soft brush I'll put the blue in there a little bit of red I'll mix it in there like that on this mop brush here so I'm slowly gently see see the little dark patches coming through here see that like that okay very softly just kind of put it in there a little bit little, little patches of dark in there just in certain spots kind of roll it around in there Again, not everything's all pristine so I'm just rolling some dark patches in there in little spots here just like that and just in circles put it in there a little bit so you little knots of wood and and whatnot I'm going back into my dark mix just a little bit more and I'll pop some up top here just like that have it come in this corner here just darken it a little bit just like that now this is if you're in acrylic you can kind of get away with doing little things like this okay just little spots here and there let's take mmm let's take a if you guys got a half inch or something like that this is a this is a 15 here we're gonna go I'm using water no glycerin no glycerin I'm going into my sap green I'm gonna get a little bit of red in that sap green there just a little bit just a little bit just deep in the red a little bit okay I'm gonna get a slight touch of white okay now I got this weird off colored gray green thing happening here okay now it's gonna have to be a tad brighter because I it's got to compete with that wood green in there all right so I'm getting a little more more uh, green I'm adding some white into it now remember we still got that red mix in there I'm getting a little bit of water no glycerin just water you got to get a brush that maintains a nice sharp edge I don't recommend um, uh, unless you got a large enough script liner. If you got a, one of those large script liners, large liner brushes. If not, then just use a nice soft brush that keeps a pretty sharp edge on it. So let's let's zoom in for a little bit. We'll add some interest to this here. All right, right in the in the grooves in there. Okay, here we go. Ready? 
just in the grooves using the corner of the brush get some of that green flowing through like this just like that all right now you can't see it very well that's fine i'm going into my yellow and i'm going into my white it's okay do it again watch see that just like so okay watch this right from the full with cut one come out here like this like that keep it just like this now watch what I do right from here go get a little thick just like this and just kind of bring it to a point like that all right watch you see that where that line is here let's bring this in a little closer so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here let me uh hold on for a second let me focus it okay you ready watch watch right in there boom look at this this will make stuff interesting look at this how's that a nice little leaf going in there like that okay that's that's one down i'm using um water no glycerin for this kind of want it to dry okay just aim the camera downward here we got one right over there okay um the way if you want to if you're a beginner you're starting this let's put it right here okay let's do it this way uh like a like a diamond okay so think of a diamond that little diamond shape and you and you block in that diamond like that all right now right there aim your strokes you see how you take your your brush you see that slant press pull release press pull release aim it toward that that center part there same thing on the other side press pull release press pull release see this okay and your center line would be right there there's another one try to keep it an odd number okay we're gonna do another one we'll do a small one we'll just do it like a little bit of a stem right there we'll put it right here I'm pressing and go to a slight point like that you can do them in various shapes okay and once again aim it see we got a little little guy just like that all right and we got it you know got it at, at three I'm going to show you how easy it is to highlight that. I'm going into some white. And I'm going to a little bit of yellow. Into the same green mix. I'm going to get a little bit of water. No glycerin. Just water. For you guys. you, need, you uh, Oil guys. You need turp. Alright. Same brush. And what you're going to do. It's your, your choice. Whether which side you want brighter or not. I'm going to press. Pull. And gently release. Press. Pull, gently release. See this? Keep the little striations in there. Now those striations are a little, little strong. All right, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just soften those up a little bit. Just soften, pull them a little bit, make them a little more gentle, like that. Okay. And you can continue with the other guy right here. Press, pull, release. Press, pull, release. Press, pull, release. All right, and get that little, let's get a little, a little more white there. Get that little vein going through right here, like that. And continue that little vein right there too. All right. Let's go up here. Right up here. Same thing. Press, pull, release. Just like that. Okay. And once again, it's my preference really. I just kind of want to, I'm taking a very soft blender. I'm going to soften that up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Let's take a little bit of yellow. I'm just taking some yellow. Uh, even a little touch of red in there. Get some white. More white. Get a different color going on in here. 
Get a little touch of water, just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little color to that. Just like so. See that? You guys can't see that, I'm gonna do it up here. Add just a little bit of color to that. Just like so. Up to you. I did that one down there, I'll do this one here. Just like that, okay. All right, let's go with a little bit of dark. I'm going into some blue. I'm not cleaning the brush. Go into a little bit of blue, I'm pulling the paint. And you're doing the same thing, but on the other end. Just like so. Look at this. See that? Same thing. Press, pull, release. Press, pull, release. But I'm aiming everything right up over there. See that? You've varied the strokes a little bit. Don't be so bashful with it. Let's pull back. Let's see. Look what you got. Alright. You see what's going on there? Okay. Let's, so we got some on the bottom. Let's go up here toward the top there. I'll focus in and I'll draw back a little bit. Let's focus a little, a little bit there. Get it nice and sharp. All right, going back into my little bit of water. Okay, I did not clean my brush yet. Matter of fact, let's add a little bit of, I got like orange here. Okay, I'm going to my little, little bit of orange and mixing it in with the green. Okay, so we're going to get flower or leaves of a different different color here. Okay, so we're going up, up here, up top. Okay, let's uh, aim it right from here. Come in that slat of wood, come curve it around like this. And right here, right here, right here. Maybe we just aim it that way. Okay, let's go up a little. It covers everything. And once again, get some leaves going here. And do it again on the other side. Just like that. Let's get them going. Okay. Um, we'll have one curve right here. Just right there like that. Just getting some more of that color. No glycerin. Now you guys, um, you other fellas would just use your turp if you're using oil paint. These do take a little practice. Okay, but you would definitely get it. Okay. Um... Let's make one overlap the other one. Let's make it interesting. Let's go right here. Just let it overlap a little bit. It's okay. Adds a little interest. Okay, and it'd be your choice which ones you want to overlap the other one. Okay, and we're gonna start with those two. All right, I'm gonna take my towel, I paint on it, and I'll just wipe it off real quick. Okay, let's go into a little bit of orange and yellow. Now yellow is transparent. All right, so your orange is going to kind of pop through. I'm going to get a little bit of white. Okay. All right. I'm going into my no glycerin. I'm going into my white, well, my um, water. Oil painters go a little bit into their turp, not much. Okay, we'll get the bright side happening right here. Press, pull, release. Press, pull, release. Look at that. And you get that little little if you got enough paint get a little, that little vein going right there okay now like I say it's your choice which ones you want to overlap I, um, the one I did first will be the one I overlap okay we're gonna come down bottom here do the same thing press pull release press pull release press pull release look at that all right I'm going into my mix here so I can get it on the edge of the uh, Get that little vein going here, a little stronger up here, a little stronger right there. Okay. All right. I'm wipe, take the paint, wipe it off. Going to the dark now. Uh, let's make a little bit of red. I'm putting the red into the green here. Uh, a little touch of blue. Mixing it in a little bit with the green. Now this, 
it's going to have a, let's get a little more green here, different type of shadow for it. Going into a little bit of water, just to loosen up the paint. And same technique. All right, that's the one I want on top of the other one. So press, pull, release. Same thing. Press, you pull, and you release. Okay, just like that. You can see the shadows really happening. See that? You see the depth that you're getting? Right in here, same thing. Right in here, just like that. Let's pull back. Let's look what you got. Okay, look at that. Okay. Now, with this same dark color, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna water this dark color down, we're gonna make a glaze. So I'm getting more water than paint. You would use more um, turp than paint, okay? And what am I gonna do with that? Well, check it out, you just make instant shadows. All right, you watch this. Right up around the side here, you, you just get that general shape right into the wood. And what's gonna happen while you're doing this? Okay, put some right in there. Just like that, just to make a nice shadow. The wood grain, once it dries, you'll still see the wood grain underneath. You follow me? Okay. And you're going along with that, that, that pattern there. Okay, same thing uh, uh, over here. Uh, you just make the, make the shadow for this fellow right down there like that. All right, you can kind of mimic some of the lines in there like this. Okay, and just kind of make a nice soft edge with that shadow. Just soften the edge a little bit so you don't have to be as hard. Okay, so you got got some shadows going on over there with it. Same thing here, down here, just add little straight shadows there. Just soften that edge, make the edge nice and soft there. Those shadows don't have to necessarily be that hard. Right here, get some shadows going here. Look at this. See that? Mm. All up in here, get some shadows happening with it there. Just like that. Soften those shadows. Going back into it again. Like I say, it's a little little water than, than paint. Okay. And you know, you get your little little shadow kind of tracing around it there. Right here, get little, little shadows, get that little curve in there and get some, see those little shadows right in here and get those shadows happening. All right, right in there, get those. All right. So, you know, you got your little, little shadows happening there. Okay, I want to separate some more darkness in that one. So I'll just get a little blue right here and really just kind of show you where that, that plant actually is there, okay. Okay, all right. I'm looking, I'm gonna put this brush away. Let's get to, um, I'm gonna take I'm trying to get br uh, brushes that you might have laying around uh, the house or something. I'm gonna get a, a really beat up, beat down, ratty little brush. Okay, now I know I've got one of those laying around here somewhere. It was, it's a brush that kind of, you know, kind of over the hill, been around, the, been around the block a little bit. All right, I'm going into my little bit of titanium white and I'm putting it into the bristles now my titanium white is not the most perfect titanium white. It's kind of got other colors mixed in it, but that's fine. That's, that's okay. And I'm pouncing into the bristles. Okay. And here we go. Ready? We'll take it and we'll get some little baby breath things going. Let's get a strong center like this. And I'm just tapping. And then as you go away from it, lighten the taps a little bit. Make them a little airy. Just like this, okay? Be a little lean on the side, like that. All right, but you gotta get those little airy bits in there, like that, okay? I'm just tapping some more color, tapping it deep in the bristles. 
Okay, so it looks like something like that. All right. Uh, we'll pop one. Oh, we'll pop one right in here. Let's put a lot of it right there in the center. Like that. Then you just get a little bit narrow toward the end. And a little more, you know, you get to see little granules of it here and there like that. Not the, not the most difficult coat thing to paint. Okay. Oh, uh, we'll put one on top of the leaves here. Why not? One right here. Get a, get a bunch of it. Pop it in the center there. Just like that. And you just kind of very lightly, you know, air it out there. See this? And I'll press it a little harder to get a light source happening right up there on top. But all the rest can be kind of airy. Like that. Get some more. Pop it in there. Um, because you're kind of leading the eye up toward the top there. All right, we might get a. Well, that's three of them there that look pretty cool. If I do more, it would have to be like five of them. Okay, and try to keep them in odd numbers. Okay, uh, I think those would do fine. I was going to put another one up there, but I think I'll stick with those three. All right, now if you notice, I got six leaves total but there's still three on on each side okay I'm gonna use this same brush I'm gonna get some green and some white mix it in there really quick here it has to be brighter than you know I have to stick out a little bit here nice edge there you're gonna take it and you're gonna kind of look at that see that all right let's do another one we'll, we'll curve it Right in there like that with that fellow. Get a little more white into that green. No water, just pure paint. Okay. And boom, pop it right in there. Okay. Uh, let's have this one kind of trail. He comes down there like that. Alright. Let's take some more green and some more white. Let's add it. Let's add one right here on the top. It just kind of comes here. Keep it thin, curve, just like that. So we got one there. Okay. Uh, right out here. Right down here on the bottom. Let's have it come here. Go path underneath that leaf, just like that. Okay. So we got it right about there. All right. Now, why did I do that? Well, let's get a little bit of red and do the same thing. You're going to pounce that color. Okay. Pounce that color, red, that red. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of white just to brighten it, just a slight bit. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. Pounce it in the middle, just like so. And we're coming outward. Now, with the red, you're going to need to highlight. Okay. But we'll just, just give it some some life of red here big circle and then we just kind of trail it out there like that put a little bit of it covering the stem a little bit we're going into our yellow okay yellow I didn't clean my brush yellow what's left of the white pounce it in your brush and pick a spot for your highlights look look at this And we're just gonna kind of flake that out there a little bit. Don't need too much. Right here. Pick where you want your highlights. Okay, we got the highlights up more over here. Get it pretty thick. It dies out there, but it's pretty solid there. See this? Just like so. I have it more on that side. Just like that. See, now that wasn't too bad, was it? Now, some of now I'm working with acrylics, so it's drying out. So some of my bright starting to dull a little bit. Okay, and so I'll just kind of give a little, little, little love over here. I'm thinning my the tip of my brush here and kind of get it a little more fine. 
this is not the right brush for it. All right. I'm looking. I think that should be about it for this painting. Very quick, very simple. Mainly the main subject is the wood grain, wood panel. Okay, and I've got various amounts of the wood panel with grain going through. All right. I'm just putting Mr. Brush back here. I'm getting my script lighter for the most important part of the uh, project here. I think I'll use some of this light color here. And I'd like to thank you for watching this. I hope it helps you out. Um, let me know what you think. I'm just going to slap my signature in here real fast. Love to hear your comments or criticisms. Love to see your rendition of it. I really would. There you go. Okay, we'll start with the brown frame. Let's see what it looks like, the brown frame on it. This this is actually for an 11 by 14, but I'll throw the frame on it and you see what it looks like with the frame. Okay, which is why you got the white border edges on the side. This is actually made for a slightly wider paper. Shorter, but it's, it's wider. All right, so that's one down. This is the actual frame that fits this um, paper. 11 by 15 and that's what it would look like with a black frame on it here let's cover up that white there there you go so it will look like that okay you didn't think leaves and and uh baby's breath and you and, and painting wood would look pretty cool but there you go and you see how the colors i snuck in there i snuck in blue i snuck in yellow i snuck in red okay we made our own little cute glaze with little shadows for the for the uh, for the vines and the plants you can add um, all sorts of things to it um, if you really want it to uh, bring it up a little bit closer there you guys can you know pretty much see it here okay and that's what we got I thank you guys for um, checking this out watching it I hope you like I say once again I hope you um, learn something and uh, love to see your renditions of it very quick very simple um, but I feel it's pretty effective all right um, love to hear your comments once again my name is Anthony Gray Grayscale painting and I hope to see you soon